Hollywood, California, we bring you Chapter 24 in the story of Paul Christian, The Doctor of River's End, starring Gene Hersholt in the title role and presented for your enjoyment by the Cheesebro Manufacturing Company, owners of the trademark Vaseline. Before we start our story today, we want to say a few serious words to the mothers of young children. Now that spring is coming, it means, of course, that from now on, your children are going to be playing outdoors for longer and longer hours. They'll be out of your sight part of the time, away from your protective care. Try to impress it on them that they must take care of themselves when you are not there. Make them understand that the most minor injury of any sort must be cared for at once in order to avoid the dangers of infection. Teach them to come into the house at once if they have received a bump, a bruise, cut, or scratch in their play, have the wound cleansed with an antiseptic, and dressed with Vaseline petroleum jelly. Vaseline jelly is entirely safe even for the child to apply himself. It is soothing, helps promote clean healing, keeps the bandage from sticking, makes the child comfortable. It has been the popular first aid treatment for minor injuries for over 50 years, and it has won this universal popularity because it is the highest quality product that we know how to make, sterilized in the process of manufacture and packed in sterilized containers. It is so inexpensive any family can afford to use it. So stock up your medicine cabinet tomorrow. It comes in bottles and tubes, costs only 10 cents a bottle, is available everywhere. And when you buy, be sure to look for the trademark Vaseline on the package. If you don't see it, you are not getting the genuine article. We bring you now Gene Hersholt as Dr. Paul Christian and another chapter of The Doctor of River's End, a chapter which begins in Dr. Christian's private office. A patient is just leaving. Well, Ira, if the dizzy spells are getting worse, I think you ought to see an oculist. Well, they are getting pretty bad. I had to lay off work twice in the last couple of weeks. Mm-hmm. Ira, how long have you been working for the lumber company? Why, Dr. Christian, I went to work for old Mr. Brent 28 years ago. Young Bob owns the business now. Hmm. Twenty-eight years you've been there, huh? That's right. Been head bookkeeper for the last 11 years. Well, maybe that's the trouble. Maybe what you need is a rest. You ought to begin thinking about retiring. Retiring? What are you talking about, Doc? I couldn't retire. They need me. Will you come in, Mrs. Brandt? Oh, hello, Mrs. Brandt. How do you do, Mr. Nelson? Russell, come here and say hello to Mr. Nelson. He works for Daddy. How do you do, sir? I'm fine. And how are you, young man? Very well, thank you. He's getting to look more like his grandfather every day. He is, for a fact. Well, pleased to see you, Mrs. Brandt. Goodbye, Dr. Christian. Goodbye, Mr. Nelson. Goodbye, Ira. Come in, Mrs. Brandt. Uh, close the door, will you, Russell? Yes, sir. All right. Uh, Dr. Christian, I wish you'd look at Russell's throat. He's been complaining that it's sore. <laughs> My goodness, it's a poor time of the year for a boy to be getting a sore throat just before Easter vacation. Well, I didn't pay much attention to it at first. But the last several days, it's hurt him so much I've kept him out of school. You know, he's singing in the choir, and I would hate to have him miss the Easter service. Well, let's have a look. Sit down in this chair, Russell, and swing around so you'll be facing the window. Now open your mouth real wide and say, ah. Ah! No, no, much wider, and a big, long, ah. Ah! That's it. Mm-hmm. Now, once more. Ah! Well, Mrs. Brand, his throat seems to be in a perfectly healthy condition. Oh, are you sure? Yes, quite sure. Well, I can't understand it. Of course, there's always a chance of, uh... Russell, be a good boy and do something for me, will you? Run out and ask Judy to bring me your medical history. Yes, sir. But I felt certain he was coming down with something, or I wouldn't have kept him out of school. Especially right now when they've been having spring examinations. Oh, he might have caught a little cold, which has cleared up by now. But he complained only this morning of how it hurt him to swallow. Oh, so even if it were only a cold... Is this what you want, Dr. Christian? Mm, yes, that's it. Oh, uh, Mr. Nelson's been waiting. He thought of something he wanted to ask you, but he has to leave and would like you to phone him. All right. Uh, remind me about it after a while, will you? Yes, Doctor. Well, look at this old Mrs. Brent. I see Russell has been sick a couple of times this past year. Let's see. Last June, just before school was out, and uh, again in September, right after it started. Yes, I remember. Mm-hmm. 
He seems to be particularly susceptible to illness just about the time they are having examinations. Why, Dr. Christian, you're not insinuating I'm that... not insinuating anything, Mrs. Brandt. But in the future, if Russell gets sick uh, long about the examination time, don't be too upset about it. It's not an uncommon illness among boys, but I never heard of its being fatal. Why, you don't think Russell would lie? Oh, lying is a pretty harsh word, Mrs. Brandt. Modern psychologists would call Russell an escapist. Why, he's the most truthful little fellow in the world. That's one thing I've always said. Russell may have his faults, but he doesn't tell lies. I've never caught him in a falsehood in my life. Well, he's a very unusual youngster. Mm, yes, he is different. <laughs> when I was a boy, I always got caught. Anyway, now that vacation is starting, I'm sure his throat will show a marked improvement. And don't worry, he'll be able to sing on Easter Sunday. Anybody else to see me, Judy? That's all, Doctor. Well, goodbye, Dr. Christian. Goodbye. Oh, where did I leave my purse? Uh, isn't that it on the table? Oh, yes. Come on, Russell. Well... This is strange. What? Well, I'm sure I didn't leave it open. Why, Judy, someone's been through my purse. Through well, your purse? Oh, was there any money in it? Oh, no, I don't think so. Not much, anyway. But I had a letter I'd just picked up at the post office. It's gone. Well, nobody'd take a letter. You, you must have left it someplace. No, no, I remember distinctly. Russell... Did you touch Mother's purse? No, Mother. There hasn't been anyone in the office, but... Uh... It was that man. What man? The man who said I looked like Grandfather. Ira Nelson? Oh, nonsense. Mr. Nelson wouldn't take your mother's letter. Just the same he did. I saw him. When? While Judy was in with you and Dr. Christian. What? Why, I can't believe it. He must have been mad or drunk. Or... He opened your purse and started out of the door and fell down. Why didn't you call someone? I was scared. He swore at me. He said he'd hit me. Oh! Russell, are you sure of what you're saying? Yes, Dr. Christian. Well, at any rate, the letter is gone. Well, whom was the letter from? Well, I don't know. It, it was in a typewritten envelope. I didn't stop to notice. I got it at the post office and put it in my purse. Well, maybe you dropped it here in the office. I'll have Judy look for it. Oh, I'm not worrying about the letter. But when a man goes through my purse and threatens my child... If I were you, I wouldn't be too quick to suspect I or Nelson. Oh, suspect is hardly the word. Russell saw him do well, it. Russell might have been mistaken. Well, I don't think he'd imagine a thing like that. Neither do I. I think he's lying about it. Russell, Dr. Christian isn't in a very good mood today. We'd better be going. Goodbye, Dr. Christian. <laughs> you shouldn't have said that to her. Oh, I couldn't help it. Well, you don't know. Suppose Ira Nelson did do it. Ah. Uh. Oh, come in, Mr. Brent. I guess I'm a little late for office hours. Oh, that's all right. I've been intending to get over here for the last couple of days, but, uh, well, we've been pretty busy at the lumber yard. And so I hear. Won't you sit down, Mr. Brent? Yeah, thanks. I, uh, <laughs> I hardly know how to commence this, Dr. Christian, but, uh, seems as if you and Mrs. Brent had a little misunderstanding the other day. Yes, we did. Edith tells me she lost her temper for the moment, and now she's sorry about it, and, well, you know how women are. She doesn't want to come right out and admit it, so, uh, I'm here to fix things up. Oh, there's nothing to fix up. We both lost our tempers. <laughs> Tell her to forget all about it. Well, that's swell. I knew you'd understand. Of course, though, you were really wrong about Russell. Oh, was I? <laughs> now, wait a minute. I don't want to start the argument all over again. And I had quite a talk with him after Edith had told me what had happened, and I'm convinced he's telling the truth. That Ira Nelson, a man you've known and trusted for years, went through your wife's purse? Oh, you can't believe that. I don't like to believe it, but what else is there to believe? If Russell wanted to go through his mother's purse, he wouldn't have to wait till she came here in order to do it. And why would a ten-year-old boy take a letter? Maybe Russell was looking for something else. You mean money? Yes, We've never refused Russell money. He doesn't have to steal. Oh, but it doesn't stand to reason that Iron Nelson would do a thing like that. 
Why, Russell said that Ayo even threatened to hit him. Well, that's ridiculous. Ayo thinks the world of your boy. Dr. Christian, Ira Nelson has been acting strangely for some time. What has he done that seems strange? Several times lately, the boys tell me he acted as if he was drunk. And two or three times, he hasn't shown up for work at all. Now, wait a minute. I know more about Ira Nelson than you think. He's been coming to me for treatment. He's been having dizzy spells. Are you sure his dizzy spells aren't just plain old-fashioned hangovers? I can tell whether or not a man has been drinking. Oh, sure. I was just kidding, Doctor. But whatever is wrong with Nelson, he isn't fit to work anymore. That's why I'm planning to let him go. You're... You're going to fire him? Well, yes. Oh, but he's been with you for years and years. Are you sure he's he He's could... been with us too long. However, I'm taking that into consideration. We'll put him on a pension. Oh, but that isn't the point. The lumber yard isn't merely a job to him, a source of income. It's his whole life. His... Why, his entire world. It's the thing that makes him feel important. Necessary. Why, if you let Dion Nilsson go, you are taking all that away from him. Taking away everything he lives for. Yes, I presume it will be a blow to his pride. Why don't you talk to him? Tell him he ought to resign. You know, because of his health. Oh, he wouldn't resign. Well, then suggest he take a leave of absence, say, for a year. By the end of that time... Oh, no, no, it, it won't work. Aren't we making too great a fuss over the matter? Other men have been fired and have lived through it. Young men, yes. Youth is resilient. But I always old. Now, look here, Dr. Christian. Nelson has outlived his usefulness to the firm. I have kept him on merely for sentimental reasons. But I can't continue to do that. It's bad for the entire organization. Now, if you'll help... We can let him down easy. Otherwise, well, business is business. All right. All right, I'll have a talk with him. We pause for a few seconds intermission in the story of Dr. Christian, and it's just long enough for me to say a few words about another of the products that makes these programs possible. Vaseline hair tonic serves a twofold purpose in the care of your hair. Used before your shampoo, it lubricates the scalp and softens the accumulation of surface dirt and dandruff scales. If the tonic is applied with a vigorous massage of the scalp, you can get up a fine tingling circulation, which will bring new life to the hair follicles and help to promote healthy growth. After this vigorous treatment, shampoo your hair with any mild soap. When it is dry, a little Vaseline hair tonic can be brushed onto the hair to smooth it into place so you present a well-groomed appearance. Anybody can use Vaseline hair tonic to advantage. It is colorless and suitable for use on blonde or white hair. It is so soothing and non-irritating to the scalp that it can be used freely on a baby's scalp. It comes in bottles priced at 40 and 70 cents at drug stores everywhere. to our story of Dr. Christian, which stars Jean Hersholt in the title role. The scene is again the doctor's office. Did Mrs. Brent phone yet, Judy? No. I called the house again, but the maid said she was still in the city doing some shopping. She won't be home till this evening. Oh, I thought maybe I could appeal to her, but the time's getting pretty short now. And I said he'd be dropping in sometime today. Uh, he's here now. Hmm? Mm -hmm. Waiting in your private office. Why don't you stop worrying about Ira and tell him? He'll get along all right. Mr. Brent's going to pension him. I'm not only worrying about Ira. I'm worrying about the Brents. The Brents? Well... This is going to be the end of Ira, just as surely as if Brent shot him with a gun. Oh, Dr. Chris. Oh, I know what I'm talking about. And then someday the Brents are going to realize they've killed a man. All because of a mistake. Well... Oh, hello, Iowa. Well, Doc, you're a wonder. Yes? <laughs> I'm glad to hear it. Yes, sir. You hit the nail right on the head when you told me to have my eyes examined. That's the only thing that's been the matter with me. I've needed new glasses. Oh, so that was it. Huh? Yep. The eye doctor said it was no wonder I felt dizzy and out of sorts. He said I should have had my glasses changed a long time ago. Well, that's fine. Uh, 
Ivor, will you tell me the truth if uh, I ask you something? Why, why, of course. You know, well, people tell things to doctors that they wouldn't tell to anyone else. What is it, Doc? Have you been taking a little drink occasionally? Me? Why, Doc, I haven't had a drink in eight years. What makes you ask that? Oh, nothing. Only in making a general checkup of your health, I wanted to know. Uh, now, there was something else I wanted to talk to you about, too. Now, you haven't been feeling well for about a year. But I'm and... going to be all right now. The eye doctor said so. Yes, uh, yes, of course, but... Uh, you're not a young man anymore, and Mr. Brent has been noticing that you haven't been exactly well, so he's going... Now, that's just like Bob Brent. Think of him noticing it with all the other things he's got on his mind. Well, he was a little worried, I so we talked it over, and he... He don't need to worry that I'll ever let him down. No, sir. I'm going to stay right on the job, sick or well. Yes, yes, I know, but, but I or he feels that... Uh, you tell Mr. Brent he don't have to worry at all. I wouldn't run out on a man like him. Dr. Christian, there ain't a Sunday but what when I go to church, I say a little prayer, thanking the Lord that I've been able to know and work for fine people like the Brents. Say, it's one o'clock. I gotta be getting back. A lot of important things to attend to. All right, Ira. Well, so long, Doc. So long, Ira. Bye, Judy. See you in church Easter morning. Goodbye, Mr. Nelson. Didn't you tell him? I... I couldn't. I... I couldn't do it. But you've got to. I can't do it, I tell you. I won't. Well, then talk to Mr. Brent again. Oh, that's useless. Don't bother me. Judy. Yes? Did the maid tell you whether Mrs. Brent took Russell to the city with her? I know she didn't. I saw Russell playing in the yard this morning. Call up the house. Tell the maid to send Russell over here. I've got to see him in my office right away. Yes, Judy. Russell Brent is here. Did the mate come with him? No, he's alone. All right, send him in. Good afternoon, Dr. Christian. Hello, Russell. Judy phoned and said you wanted to see me. Yes, I do. I want to ask you something. Russell, why did you tell your mother you had a sore throat? I did have a sore throat. Oh, no. You might be able to fool your mother, but you can't fool the doctor. Let's have the truth. My throat was sore. Well, if you won't answer the question, Russell, I'll answer it for you. Your mother... You told your mother that you had a sore throat so you could stay out of school and not have to take the examinations. I did not. Oh, yes, you did. You told a fib. Now, telling a fib isn't such a terrible thing, but when you tell a fib that hurts someone and hurts them very much, that is bad. Of course, we might tell those kind of fibs and not know we're hurting anybody. But if we do know it, we shouldn't do it, should we? I don't know what you mean. I mean, if you had told a fib about someone and then found out that fib was hurting him, wouldn't you be willing to tell the truth? I don't tell fibs. You can ask my mother. All right, Russell. When Judy left you and Mr. Nelson alone out there the other day, tell me exactly what Mr. Nelson did. He opened Mother's purse and took the letter and ran out the door. Well, didn't he say anything to you and give you any reason why you was going through your mother's purse? No, he, he just grabbed it and ran and slammed the door. But didn't you say he swore at you and threatened to hit you? You said he fell down, too. Well, he swore at me after he went out the door. And he did fall down. After he went out the door? Yes. But if he slammed the door shut, how could you see him fall down? How did you know? Well, maybe he fell down before he went out the door. I don't remember. I can't remember everything. Now, wait. Let's get this straight. The first thing he did was to open your mother's purse. Yes. And then what did he do? Well, I just told you. He took my report card and... Report card? Where was your report card? In the letter. How did you know it was? Mother told me. Russell, you're lying. I am. Your mother didn't know what was in that letter. I don't care. I am not. You took that report card yourself. 
Why? I didn't. I didn't. I didn't. I'll answer that question, too. You were out of school, so they had to send your report card to your mother by mail. And you didn't want her to see it. You watched out for it. And when it came, you took it. I did not. And you better let me alone. I have nothing more to ask you, Arsel. The whole thing is perfectly clear. I'll talk to your mother about it. Go ahead. Go ahead and tell her. She won't believe it, because I'll tell her different. She'll believe it when your teacher tell her your report card was in that envelope. That's no sign I took it. Mr. Nelson took it. I saw him take it. Now listen to me, Russell. Your father is going to fire Mr. Nelson on account of your fibbing. Are you going to let that happen? I don't care. I don't care if he does get fired. Your father is going to fire him this afternoon and tomorrow on Easter when the whole world should be happy. You're going to make that day the unhappiest in Mr. Nelson's life. You can't make me say I stole that card. You're going to stand up there in the choir, in church, and sing anthems, knowing down in your heart that you are a little hypocrite, a sneaking little coward. I'm not a coward. Oh, yes, you are. A sneaking little coward. I'm not. Nobody dares call me a coward. If you was my size, you wouldn't call me that. Nobody has to call you a coward because you already know it. Because inside of you, you know you're afraid. I'm not. I'm not afraid of anything. You are afraid to tell the truth. Afraid you'll get a spanking. You can't take it, can you? I can if I want to. Oh, sure. But you don't want to. You'd rather tell lies and hide behind your mother. You are a brave little boy, aren't you? Well, you better go on home, Russell. I didn't. I didn't take the letter. Never mind. I don't want to hear anything more about it. Both of us know how yellow you are. And so there's nothing more to talk about. Go on. Go on home. Judy? Am I late for church? <laughs> no, but you'd better hurry. Jerry's already gone in. All right. Aren't you coming? In a minute. Good morning, Dr. Christian. Oh, good morning, Mr. Point. Hello, Russell. So you're singing in the choir this morning, huh? No, he's not. <laughs> Why? What's the matter here? Well, I imagine you know what's the matter. Dr. Christian, I have to face the most unpleasant task I've ever faced in my life. To admit my own son is a liar and a thief. Well, aren't you? Yes. Uh, he took that report card out of his mother's purse. Stole it. Stole it to hide the fact that he wasn't getting good grades in school. And then tried to fasten the blame on poor old Ira Nelson. Thank heaven I found out in time. <laughs> then you did find out in time. Hmm? Yes. If I had fired Nelson, I'd never have forgiven myself. Oh, I... I can't believe that Russell's always lied. <laughs> His mother and I have decided not to let him sing this morning. But that isn't enough punishment. I don't know what to do with him. If I were you, I'd be very proud of him. Proud? Well, he confessed, didn't he? It takes courage to confess a lie. A lot of courage. Yes, that's something. But to think of his putting me in a position of making a, a heel out of myself. I was going to fire him. Now, no, wait a moment. I don't think Russell made the suggestion that you fire Nelson... But it was because of him. If he hadn't lied to me, No, I... no. You said I had outlived his usefulness to the firm, and business was business. Russell's lying didn't put you in a position of making a heel out of yourself. Oh, that was your own idea. Well, I... Uh... Yeah, but just the same, he did lie. Oh, and you were a boy. Did you ever lie? Why, uh... Well, did you? Well, I suppose so, yes. Why, all of us did. Truth isn't something that's born with us. It's something we have to acquire. Come here, Russell. Yes, sir. Everyone does something that are wrong, and mean things, and selfish things, but few of us have the courage to admit it. I take back what I said about you. You're not a coward. Thank you, Dr. Christian. Russell, you kids put parents in a mighty awkward spot at times. They have to be angry with you and call you down. Just because it's the proper thing to do. Not because they really mean it. 
Your father didn't mean the thing he said. He thinks you're pretty okay, and so do I. Hey, no! What are you crying for? I'm not crying. Well, be careful. You don't want to be husky when you sing the Easter hymns. And you'd better hurry in the church, too. The choir must be ready to start. Can I, Pop? Yeah. Yeah, go ahead, son. Well, I guess services are starting. Shall we go in? And so we bring to a close our Dr. Christian Easter story. Jean Hersholt, famous Hollywood star, appears in the title role through the courtesy of 20th Century Fox. And the program comes to you from the makers of Vaseline preparations with Easter greetings and every good wish for the season that is ahead. On today's program, you heard the St. Brendan's Boys Choir under the direction of Robert Mitchell. Jean Hersholt will be back again next Sunday with another Dr. Christian story. Until then, this is Art Gilmore bidding you good afternoon.
This is the Columbia Broadcasting System.